everybody and welcome to Reed's Reads Spider-Man Crawl Space Edition. Check us out at the Spider-Man Crawl Space dot com. Well guys, I'm in my new review studio. As you can see, I have of course with my Spider-Man uh, pop right here with my review of the latest issue, Amazing 35, aka Amazing 836 for original numbering. So uh, please pop a comment below if you like the new setup for the studio as well as the new uh, area. If not, just let me know. I'll go ahead and do some adjustments and changes. I'm trying to do this so you can actually have some nice green screen and look a little bit more fun and professional. I like to keep things changed up and not be too boring or too traditional. So let's actually get into issue 35 or 836 here by Nick Spencer and guest artist Oscar Belzulu. So first of all, let's go with the pros. So so let's go into the artwork here, here by Oscar. As much as I love Patrick Gleason's artwork, Oscar doesn't do too bad of a fill in ours. He kind of keeps the action flowing, the characterization. It reminds me of some of the early uh, Carlos Pacheco work when he was first working for Marvel back in the late 90s. Um, it's nice, it keeps a good flow with the storyline. There's some nice emotionals and faces are really good and the action scenes are good. Um, but however, I feel like Patrick Gleason's artwork was a little bit more suited for this story arc. Um, also, there's some nice parts here with the story beats. I love the characterization with Peter as well as the history of the chameleon, how the chameleon has kind of gotten in over his head. I mean, one thing J.M. DeMantis uh, did with the character both after Craven's last hunt in early 90s, such as, you know, Peter's fake uh, android parents that come up in the storyline, as well as some of the things that have happened to him over the years. The chameleon, why the first supervillain for Peter Parker as Spider-Man, has kind of gone up and down over years. He went from A-list to C-list, back to B-list, kind of back to C-list. Now he's kind of in between A and B here, even though he's forgotten that Peter was um, Spider-Man. And it, it's nice character because it feels like the chameleon has really gotten in over his head. He had this big plan to really kind of throw a couple of conflicts, use what was left of S.H.I.E.L.D., kind of cause a war, kind of show that he was the big dog now, even though Craven was dead, and guess what? It just, he's gotten in over his head, and I like that he's trying to solve it, salvage it, but at the same time is, um, he's still very kind of menacing in it, where he knows when to panic and not to panic, and that's some really nice characterization. Nick Spencer has kept that ever since his uh, use of him in Superior Foes, and it's nice, but that kind of leads to the cons, guys. What is this story really doing? I'm sorry, um, what is going on with the 2099 universe? I don't get what this really has to do with anything. It's trying to move on the characterization as well as the story plots with the chameleon. And I don't know what's going on. Seriously, what is this about? Doom's mad, he almost got assassinated, which was a robot, and he demands, but he's covered up the city, which would have caused a war with the US government. It's like, there's some times where you go past comic logic and real logic, and I'm not quite sure what is going on here with what the community's plan is, how this ties in with Doom 2099 and the, the 2099 uh, timeline with Miguel Hero, which we won't see with the timeline uh, next issue tie-in next week. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. Um, this this story kind of seems confusing. I mean, yes, there's nice characterization of story beats between Peter's past and the 90s Spider-Man and all the stuff that went on with him during the Clone Saga pre and post and also kind of trying to do the sibling relationship between Peter and Tessa. But honestly, what's going on? I, I don't get what this the point of the storyline is. Maybe with the tie-in issues and the conclusion next week, we might understand or when the storyline ends. But... I don't see where it's going into this. So I'm giving this a great is a C plus. Um, it's more of the lower ends here of Nick Spencer's storylines. I just, I don't see what the storyline is really the point of this. We have nothing going on with the past with supporting cast members or with Kindred. It just feels like this is kind of thrown in with the 2099 crossover and to the chameleon subplot. It almost feels like they're just trying to get it up and over with. And I don't know what really the point of the story is. So I'm giving it a C plus. It's not bad. It's got some nice beats with the characters of Peter and Tessa and Chameleon and even kind of some other pieces with how Dr. Doom seems to just get away with anything. But what's really going on? I mean, seriously, what what is going on and how are they trying to really put it that the Fantastic Four and Avengers are busy, busy, that only Peter can handle this with his sister. I don't absolutely know anything, as well as the time travel and the, all the alternate universes. It's a nice little nod, seeing Spider-Girl and some of the other storylines like Next Avengers, but what's going on? I don't know. It all wraps up here in the next couple weeks here before the new year. On that note, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the new studio as well as the uh, setup here with the premiere review. Please leave a comment over in the in the uh, comment section below this video if you would like to know more or what you think of the new setup. And for more information on the latest Spider-Man news, podcasts, and more, check us out at the SpiderManCrawlspace.com. And on that note, everybody, I will see everybody later.